Hey everybody, it's Andrea over at SoSpar.com. I'm here today to show you how to make this fabulous commuter tote. This is like a slouchy style satchel and it fits over the shoulder nicely. It has a couple of unique features. My favorite feature is that there are two interior compartments. So you got one on the left with its own independent flap closure and then you have one on the right and inside of each of these compartments are six slip pockets so we have a total of 12 pockets there's these fabulous side snaps that allow the bag to expand as needed and I'll tuck those flaps in so I can show you how big that is it's a huge bag the other really unique feature is in the base of this, I incorporated a one inch piece of foam so I can carry my laptop and my digital camera and it's gonna absorb that shock and keep my electronics safe. The finished measurements on this bag are seven inches across the side, so a seven inch depth. 16 inches across the base and then height wise we're looking at about 10 inches so it's a really great size for commuting hence the name you might even be able to get away with this as your carry-on bag if you travel really light even as a weekender so it was a ton of fun to make i'm so excited to show you how to sew it I'm even more excited to see your finished projects. I did have to break this tutorial up into a couple um, video segments so it's not too long to upload. So you'll see at the end of each one um, a continuation if it's continued. And at the end, of course, I'll have my wrap up and summary. So I hope you will take a minute and comment and let me know what you think. And please share photos of your finished project on Instagram. Tag me at SoSpire or hashtag SoSpire. All of the pieces, there are multiple pieces in different sizes that you need to cut out. And what I've done to make that very simple for you is I've included all the pattern piece measurements in the notes. So if you look below this video, you'll see where there's a little summary that goes with the video. You can find all the pattern pieces there. Or even better, go to SoSpire.com, search commuter tote, and I will have a complete blog post with a roundup. You'll see all of the videos in a segment in sequential order and all of the pattern pieces, as well as my thoughts about the design. So that would be the best way for you to find it. Just head on over to SoSpire.com and type in commuter tote. So shall we get started? Okay, so to begin, we're going to craft our exterior front and back panels. I've made one of them and it will look like this when you're done. I'm going to make one with you now. What I have here are three pieces of material that measure six inches across by 12 inches tall. And I'm going to piece those together with this pretty floral as the center accent. For this entire project, I'm going to use a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. And you're going to line up the pieces right sides together. We'll work with two at a time. And then stitch all the way down that right hand edge. Then open that up. And that's what you have now with two pieces joined. Then take the remaining third piece and place that right sides facing on the opposite side of that accent panel. You're just lining up the edges and then stitching down that right hand side. All right. Now the front or a rear panel is complete. You're going to create one more of these. I already have mine done. 
We just want to add a little detail to that. So I have a like size piece of batting and this finished piece measures approximately 16 and three quarters of an inch. If you stretch it, it might be 17 inches across by 12 inches tall. And I have a piece of batting to those same measurements. All right, and then I'm gonna press this flat and then we're going to stitch some accent stitching just on the inside of that pretty floral panel. Okay, my second panel is done and I want to set that aside for just a second while we create the side panels for the exterior. These have snaps in them and they measure, you'll have two side panels which measure 8 inches across by 12 inches tall and we need to install some snaps at the top two and a half inches down and two and a half inches in from the side. I do have a piece of quilt batting on the back of this as well. So you will just use a mat to measure two and a half inches in from the top and the base and then you can poke those snaps out and Fasten the snaps according to your manufacturer's directions. Some of you may have snap pliers, that's fine. I just use a little cutting board and a hammer. I don't hammer on the table because it's bad for the machine. So I'm gonna do that in my lap and then I'll show you what it looks like. So I have one piece of the snap attached. Then you put that little end in there and then just fold over your edge and you can poke the remaining prongs through to line up with that. You can measure it if you want, but as long as all your corners line up, you're fine. So just feel that and make sure that's good and firm before you go ahead and attach it. I'm just hammering that like that and then that's what it looks like and it will snap and it's going to draw in the sides of the bag for us and give it a really cool shape. All right, so I have the front and rear panels and now I want to take one of those panels and position a side panel on each edge, so one to the right and one to the left, and this one here I put the snaps on before the batting. It doesn't really matter, but I don't want you to wonder why you don't see the snaps through there. Okay, so all my edges are lined up. You can go ahead and pin those pieces in place. And then using that same 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, you're going to stitch down both sides, reinforcing with the back stitch at the beginning and the end. Okay, now I have the sides attached. I don't know if I mentioned it, but the snaps are towards the top of the bag if you have an accent panel that has a clear right or wrong side, you'll want to make sure that the snaps are positioned towards the top. So that looks great. This is like a little tri-fold. I'm going to set that aside for a moment and then with the other exterior panel, I want to attach the base panel which measures 8 inches wide by 17 inches long and you're just going to line that up. It also has a piece of quilt batting on the back and you just want to line that up with the bottom edge and stitch all the way across that base 
reinforcing with a back stitch at the beginning and the end. to take, I'll put the snaps towards the top, you're going to take this panel and lay it on top of that so that you're aligning the base of your base panel with the base of this other panel, okay? So it looks like that, and then stitch the two bases together all the way across from the side seam to the side seam. Don't forget to back stitch. Okay. And now when you open that up, you should have something that looks like a big T. Okay. So you want to now take these the right hand side and align that with this right hand side. And you'll want to go ahead and Pin this in place, and then do the same thing aligning the left hand side with the left hand side. And pin that in place. And now you can see your bag is really starting to take shape. You need to stitch these sides closed, so we're going to do that from this end to this end, or this finger to this finger, reinforcing with the back stitch. And then I just have to do the same thing for the other side. shape only one problem there's two holes at the bottom so you just align the side of your base and the base of your side and stitch from finger to finger or um, seam to seam using that back stitch to reinforce at the beginning and the end ready to turn right side out. You want to reach in there and poke out those corners. Looks really good. It's very fun. Okay, and this is what it looks like. And I'll give you an idea of how those side snaps give it some really fabulous shape. See that? Okay, so we're going to want to come all the way around this top edge and fold that over approximately one inch and just pin it all the way around. 